So, Arthur, do you want to start with a little chat about your thoughts? Uh, well, I, I think it's been uh, different for everybody. Some people have found it a very hard time. Um, personally, I find it very uh, refreshing uh, to be able to let go of the plans of what I'm going to have to do now uh, and just, you know, concentrate on what there is in life, uh, the beauty around us and uh, my personal relationship has got deeper and deeper. So I've been in one way very lucky there. And so I've, I've not, I found it, yeah, a very positive experience. Tony, can I ask you the same? Yeah, um, when this started in March, I found I had to uh, come out of being a recluse into isolation because all of a sudden I had to spend more time with my wife, which uh, has been quite difficult to say the least. But um, no, I've been fine throughout this. I, I don't really go out much. I don't really associate with human beings outside my front door because uh, that's just the way my life is. Um, the mental health side, I do appreciate because, uh, yes, one has to sort of learn how to live with oneself, have to live in close proximity uh, with one's partners and stuff. And uh, to come out of one's normal routines of life, I think, is something I think we've all been had to face and think, wow, this is a bit weird. You know, we can't sort of drift along in our normal ways or have our normal sort of schedules for a year or whatever. Um, so that's not been too bad for me, but um, as you would probably appreciate, this past couple of weeks have been absolutely mind-blowingly upsetting when not only we've got to deal with the pandemic, but we've got to deal with all this racist nonsense that's going on, plus mental health on top of it. You know, these are three big weights that the human race are carrying on its shoulders. And I will be the first to say that I'm struggling with it, purely and simply because, you know, we are one creed. We all have to live on this planet. And why, when we're fighting uh, 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 an invisible menace, we have to fight a menace because of what's on our skins or the way that we treat each other. And how we deal with this in the future is not just gonna be us as individuals, as human beings, all lives matter, but the way that we are conducted by the people who run us. They've got to look at things differently, otherwise, we are going to be in this perpetual menace with every now and again another invisible menace coming to seek to destroy us. And that's how I see it. I said, what about you, Paul? Excellent, well said. Tell, so, what do you think? Me? Yeah. Uh, well, I really appreciate everything Tony's saying and also what Arthur said, actually, because, you know, with I, <clears throat> we are a family of eight. I've got six kids uh, the older ones have grown up but everyone was has been home so in one sense it's been like a fantastic family holiday we live in a beautiful part of the world with fields around us and we've had pr that privilege of being able to move around so on, on that side of things it's been a really great time the i mean it's been pers personally tough because of course all the, the cash flow stops and like all of us, the, uh, and so many artists and musicians, all the work suddenly went. January and February for me were lean and then March was looking better and then all of a sudden the lockdown happened and so everything's good, everything suddenly disappeared. But actually the, the, those bigger things that Tony was talking about are, you know, in the personal journey for, for each of us, the internal, uh, journey and the struggle of that is profound and I, I one of the things that I really take heart of I'm so appreciate being invited to participate in a project like this is that I really really believe that we we, we are surrounded with such a noisy narrative of so many negative dividing things yet it's what we carry you carry musicians and artists carry that actually unite people across cultures creeds genders and all these other things and i and i find that hugely and immensely encouraging to be able to identify with that and participate in that be part of that and, and recognize one of the things i've been dialogue with friends is that you know we for, for whatever reason are born on this earth and we pursue rhythm 
and harmony and melody and, and color. Um, and we do it despite whether we earn money or not. We, we're driven to do this thing. And those are the things that are the real anchors for the human race. And I, and I so for me, uh, that's part of my process of thinking through this and the privilege of doing this and, the, and, the, uh, and and actually, I feel encouraged by that. And I feel encouraged on the mental health side of it too. That actually this, you know, while everybody's going, what should we do? How do we resolve this? You know, actually for the art musicians and artists, just get on with what you do because actually you're part of the answer and not the problem, you know. That's my two cents. Very, very well said, very well said. Peggy, Peggy, what's your views? How have you been? <laughs> well, it's been okay for me. I mean, I, I feel very lucky because a week after our tour finished, we came over to Brittany where we have, um, a, you know, a big garden. So lockdown for us has been, well, revelationary because for the first time in June, the whole month, we've seen the garden growing. And it's, you know, you look out there and you, it, it makes you realise how lucky you are. And I miss playing music so much. That's, I miss getting in and out to the van um, more than anything. And, and one thing I have learned is, is that, Music, it means so much to our audiences as well, because I get many emails and phone calls saying, oh, your tour has been cancelled, your festival of property has been cancelled. Um, next year, 2021, when I, I think it will be that long before we're able to get back into doing music live again. And it makes you realise how lucky you are doing what we all do. You know, we, we miss playing with each other and we miss, we miss our audiences and, and applause and the occasional pints. <laughs> very true, very true. <laughs> well said, Peggy. John, what, what's your view? Yeah, I mean, it's being, being in isolation when one's working so much, it doesn't seem so different from what one normally does. I've, I've been inside for three months now. Um, mm. It's interesting because I had 13 months of a mystery virus that stop me walking, playing, balancing, writing, everything that they couldn't diagnose, but went away literally overnight, 13 months later. So this is like, for me, a bit of a walk in the park, you know, to, to get on, to, to write a bit, to read a lot, to watch things I've missed, to listen to music, to find new music, you know, that I, I've enjoyed that despite a broken tooth here and one that keeps falling out here that stayed in long enough for me to play the other day and then came out again but the dentist reopened this Friday so hopefully I'll be back back in the swing of things but um, I agree with everything that's been said so far about you know having come up in music in the 60s and literally played with everybody on merit as to how good they were no matter what they looked like where they came from what gender they were, I didn't notice. And my, my favorite line was an old friend of mine, Benny Carter, the great jazz arranger and sax player. Uh, somebody asked him on a gig, uh, excuse me, Mr. Carter, is your pianist white? And his answer was, do you know, I don't know. I've never asked him. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. That's very good. <laughs> Josh, you're in the middle of my screen. I don't know if you're in the middle of everybody else's. What's your view? Uh, in the middle, yeah. That's my view. Uh, no, I, I think lots of ways to start here. I think I'll initially start with the, uh, the colour and the race thing because Tony raised a wonderful point there. And I want to cast you, well, you, I'm not casting your mind back. I'm going to pass, cast my mind back. My best friend when I was a kid, when I was probably nine, who turned out to be a fantastic bass player, by the way, Tony, which I'll talk to you about later. Um, he uh, was adopted uh, and a black guy. And I didn't know he was black. I'm dead serious when I say that, it hadn't occurred to me. I've got some great photographs where we were at uh, infant school together and we were the three wise kings. So I was probably the Jew because I kind of looked that way a bit. So, and, and, and Matthew was uh, a black, he's obviously still a black guy. And I hadn't noticed that he was black, which is really weird, until somebody pointed it out to me. 
And I said, well, what do you mean by that? And they said, well, he's got different color skin. And I said, well, what does that matter? And I can remember thinking that when I was a little lad. And then I realized, I think, well, I, I don't know whether I've just realized now, of course I haven't, I've realized it when I was a kid, that it's learned behavior. Racism is learned behavior. I'm convinced of that. I don't think children, when they grow up initially, when they're just, you know, little children, notice that other kids are different, whether they be Chinese, Japanese, uh, African descent, whatever it might be. I think it's a learned behavior and it's a learned, uh, dare I say, it's a, a, unfortunately with a lot of parents, the way they've taught their children is to almost, for some reason, have a hatred for black people. And it's a really weird thing, whether it be black or Indian or, or Asian, or whatever it might be. And it's a definite learned behavior. And I think that I, I certainly have experienced that in my life because I didn't notice that my best mate was black. Didn't, didn't occur to me, um, didn't even notice it. I think it's dreadful what's happening at the moment. The whole racism thing, I think it's just, it was, a, it was a, a, a bomb, it is a bomb waiting to go off. Uh, and it's probably about time that actually it was defused, I think. And, uh, and that we all sit back and think about this a little bit because nobody has any more rights than the other person. We're all human. It's that simple, isn't it? It's that simple. We all eat, we all sleep, we all drink, we all walk, we all do whatever it is, hopefully. Uh, and that really upsets me. That, and the other thing, of course, is that I spent, just before I joined Tony, the big country, which is quite a long time ago now, Tony, isn't it? 30, Too long. 32 years ago, I was in a black American band before then, a band called Heatwave, which, you know, Boogie Nights and Always and Forever and all that stuff. Um, they were all black. I was the only white guy in the band. And I thoroughly loved the point, but they were my best mates and it made no difference that, that we were white, black or indifferent. And I think music is very much that way. I think music is one of the very uh, few um, career choices where race, religion, colour, creed, whatever is irrelevant. Music is the common goal. Uh, and, and I think that... Uh, well, it's ter terribly sad. Now, look at the um, look at the positive things about lockdown. Well, there are some bad things, um, and it would sound so bloody uh, middle class, first world problems. I hated not being able to use the boat. <laughs> it's, it's really crap because I can walk to it, and uh, literally, it's a thirty second walk to the boat, and we all got on it as a family. We actually. Got and my daughter, we went for a trip down the river during lockdown, but we just thought, hey, we're really self-isolating. We couldn't be more isolated. We're in the middle of the river on the Thames. Um, and sure enough, some drunken bum on the river bank <laughs> with his can of beer said, fuck off, go home, save life. <laughs> and I, felt, I felt like such a hellock. I felt so dreadful that we just turned around, came home, and, uh, and more up and came home again and then didn't touch it again for weeks. But the other positive things are uh, that we've got a garden, only a little garden at the back here, it's not very big at all, but we've got a little blue bird box in it that my brother made many years ago, and I've never seen a bird in there, ever, until recently. And in the last two months, we've had a little bird and his family popping in and out and loving life. And I love the fact that this is giving nature a time to, or it's giving nature the right, actually, probably, to stand up and say, hey, and I saw this on a video the other week, you might have seen as well on a YouTube uh, thing. Brilliant. The, the, the resounding message was that it was Mother Nature talking to us saying, just remember, you are guests of mine. And I thought that was really profound and really powerful. And I've taken that with me and uh, and I think that really that's the positive that's come out of this is that it's certainly given us all time to reflect and can we work from home we're probably one of the very few industries that can't always work from home because we're all missing that live gig thing aren't we the four of them, you know twiddling a thumbs sound check time and like Dave and Tony and probably the rest of us we've all we've all lost a tremendous amount of gigs with Brokel Harum all of our shows this year are just been obliterated as Dave will know uh, as like so many, well, all of us, we're all in the same boat. Nobody has a secret gig that we can go and do. It can't be done at the moment. Um, 
and we're going to have to just put up with that and hope that 2021 is a good thing. And I really hope that we get gigging again soon because I'm fed up with my wife finding jobs for me to do. Yeah. I've got to go back to some things for a minute. They've always had that issue, haven't they? That's part um, of it. I reckon. That's, the, that's the problem with our business. We need people. People need us, yeah. but we need people. And yeah, our role is to entertain people in any artistic way. Uh, and unless we can, to use the uh, immortal words of Pete Townsend, join together with the band, we can't do anything until we're in that situation. So we've got to lump it, I'm afraid. But unfortunately, our government don't care about people who provide entertainment for people because they're not providing any support for us. So uh, no, no, that, when I say yeah. things got to change, things have got to change. Um, whilst I've still got the, the, the square, I do, I've got to say this because this is in relation to the track that we've all just taken part in a recording. When I was about six, seven, eight years old, my cousin, who was in the army at the time, uh, took me to Hammersmith Odeon yeah. to watch Chuck Berry and the animals open for them. And House of the Rising Sun was the first song I ever saw live. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's was that 1927, well. Tony? Sorry? Was that 1927? I'm not going to swear. No, I was about half past eight. I'm not going to swear. It was an hour later. So, so, so when, when, um, when Ian oh, um, invited me to come and do this, I just kind of thought it was quite sort of karmic that um, I was asked to take part in this. And uh, it's, it's, my life has gone in a circle. That's, that's, yeah. a really, that's a really good point. That's lovely. Really good. I, I just, I just have to say to all of you. I mean, I, I know, I know that I don't, I don't know that anybody else of, of us lot has actually been in total isolation. But I, I, I had a relationship breakup in December, and and the the upshot of that was I had to find somewhere else to live, and I didn't actually move in and move out and move into my new place until the twentieth of March, and then locked well. down the place since since the twenty third. So I've been in lockdown for the whole of this time, and I have to say, the uh, the first few weeks was a little bit of it was a little bit of fun. Everybody was getting used to it, and people were off work, and people were at home with their kids, and there was all of those kind of things, and there was a lot of communication going on. But not too long into that, I found I, I personally really started to think a lot about mental well-being because the ability to get out of bed in the morning and keep yourself together and uh, find ways to just stay sane was was um was really quite challenging and i found myself when we were allowed to go out for walks and stuff like that i'm lucky enough to have the beach at the end of the road i'd go down to the end of the road and go walk along the beach and i found myself just being overcome with emotion i i was walking on the beach a couple of times and just like crying burst into tears really didn't know why and it's a lot to do with the the uh you know the the, the stress of what we've got to look forward to the stress of coping on your own and not seeing other people, blah, 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 blah. So I became very, very aware of, what, of, of how important it was to talk to other people, talk, to, talk about your problems and actually get on the phone and speak to people. So to be fair, when Ian asked me to get involved in doing this and making this happen, this is, the last four or five weeks of doing this has given me such a massive sense of purpose and, a, and, and something to really get up and be doing every day. And I know, you know, as we know, we're not, we're not doing it for money. We've all lost gigs this year. Um, you know, I, I had a Swiss, Swiss tour plan for, for about two weeks, three weeks in March, and I should have been there, and that would have been the biggest owner of the year, and I couldn't do it. So the point is, this this whole process has, has, has made me personally very much more aware of what mental well-being is, is, is like in terms of people having to deal with isolation, deal with their own thoughts and worries and the future. But it just goes to show what we've managed to do here has exceeded all expectations. I mean, the quality of what we've managed to produce is unbelievable. Sadly, John Etchells, who's, who's very kindly, you know, done the sort of final bits and the engineering on this, is, is actually uh, editing four BBC shows that he's got a hand in tonight by nine o'clock. So he can't be here. But, um, but that just goes to show what's possible. I think the thing about this that's great is the fact that everybody, you know, that all, the, all the, the mere mortals out there won't fully understand that what we've managed to do, none of us were in the same room at any point. This has all been done from our own places and it's just been remarkable. And it's also to be, from my personal point of view, the feeling of bonding that's come through it is just unbelievable. You know, I mean, I didn't know Josh before. I've never met Tony or Tell before. 
But I now feel, or, or you know, I've met Arthur once or twice, but I now feel like I know everybody. And, and in, the, in this process, what it's done is it's actually gone, well, you know, none of us are ever going to take a step back from the position we're in now. We'll always go forward and do other work together in the future. That in itself is a wonderful thing because the only thing that, you know, the only thing that we can do as human beings consistently is be kind to each other and pay, pay forward and spread the love to whoever else it might be. And, you know, all these other problems in the world, as, as somebody said earlier, it's that, you know, the solution is with us, not with, I think Tell said it. But, you know, it, the, the whole, the, whole um, the, the, the feeling of, of, uh, of being united and getting together to do something like this in a very, very tough situation and a very tough time has been incredibly uplifting. It's been brilliant. So I personally want to thank you lot for saying, okay, you know, let, 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 let's get involved and do it. Because I think what we've, you know, what we've done exceeded all expectations from the very first week when I did the acoustic guitar and Phil played the drums. I mean, when you now watch the, listen to the track or watch the video and you see it all come together, it sounds unbelievable. So thanks to Ian for coming up with that suggestion. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, Ian. You've done amazing well with it. You've blown me away, actually. Well, it's just amazing.